130, 117. And really, look, this game was won in the first quarter. Minnesota blitzed Memphis 41 points in the first quarter. Grizzlies hung around. They scored 33 in the first, but when you score 41 points in the first quarter, you are setting the tone. Anthony Edwards in his playoff debut, 36 points, well over his point prop at 22 and a half. Bill Ryder had that. Carl Anthony Towns, 29 points, 13 rebounds, a little double-double action for him. So they combined for 65. Rest of the team combines for 65. They had six players in double figures. They got 15 from Jade McDaniels off the bench. Malik Beasley had 23. Like this was a, an absolute group effort to beat the two seed. John Morant goes for 32. He gets his. He had a dunk on D'Angelo Russell uh, later in the fourth quarter. That, that was great, but the Grizzlies come up short because the T-Wolves just absolutely blitzed Memphis in the opening frame. So, Bill, this game, as I just mentioned, was won in the first quarter. When you score 41 first quarter points, I mean, what does that say to your opponent rest of way? Yeah, I think, and I think this was somewhat to be expected. I think what we saw in that first quarter, you're right, when the game was won and lost for each of these teams, even though both these, are, both these teams are young, and it's a truism that young teams struggle to adjust or succeed in the postseason. It's Memphis that has the weight of massive expectations. Not just the two seed. A lot of folks think, rightfully so, despite this game, they can make a deep run. And for the first time, really all year, even when, when John Morant went out for big stretches, they were back on their heels. They didn't play particularly well. They looked panicked. And you saw that Timberwolves team coming off that big win against the Clippers, taking advantage of that momentum and that lack of focus and energy by Memphis. What's the identity of this Minnesota club? It's such a good – they have not had an identity for years and years and years. And I think where they're at now, I think the, as a NBA GM told me about them, they finally believe they can be good. I'm not sure that they're great yet. They're obviously a good basketball team. But Anthony Edwards, for me, is the missing ingredient. Carl Anthony Towns had a massive game, the huge dunk where I took a slight, should have probably just praised the guy. A whole bunch of contributors from around that basketball team. But a lot of it is because they've got a rookie who plays like a superstar, did against the Clippers, did in this game. And when you know you can get buckets from a guy like that, and he takes pressure off a guy like Cat, the identity becomes, oh man, we've got the weapons, we've got the talent. If I'm Carl Anthony Towns, I don't have to do everything. And suddenly it becomes, we're building something finally that's real. The Timberwolves have the best offensive rating in the NBA since January 1st, 118.4. How do you explain the way they play, the pace at what they play, the way that they play, the way that Chris Finch, who I'm not sure a lot of NBA hardcore, like casual fans, even know who the hell the coach is for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Even not so casual fans have been pretty quick to throw some shade at that head coach over the course of this year. And even over, over the last couple of weeks as we got into this, into this point, um, Edwards is obviously a huge part of that. Carl Anthony Towns is one of the most talented big men, just talent now, not necessarily execution or success in the postseason we've ever seen. He's an outstanding three-point shooter. You saw the dunk, his athleticism. When he wants to be or when he's engaged, he could be an outstanding defender. And then you throw Patrick Beverly in, some heart, some soul, some grit, some guts, some toughness and know-how in the postseason. And all those other guys who contributed a little bit offensively and a lot energy-wise, the reason that we've seen a much, much improved team in that offense you talked about is because they've got two superstars now. They've got a guy in Pat Beverly who wants to win, and they've got a bunch of other players around those guys that know their roles and don't have to do everything. You take the load and the pressure off role players. They can be role players. Good things can happen. Look, when you shoot 39% from beyond the arc, good things happen. Yeah, it does. Um, you, you go 24 or 27 from the free throw line. I mean, look at that. And I mean, look, 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 Grizzlies were 32 of 43 from the free throw line. I'm not saying, look, they win this game if they hit their free throws. And look, Minnesota could have won by an even larger margin of victory. They had 18 turnovers in this game. And they could have put Memphis away at various points in this game. And Memphis kept hanging around because of those turnovers. It's such a great point. And actually, and that's the thing about this Minnesota team. I don't want to rain on the parade. They, out, they were outstanding. They deserved the win. I don't think we should get carried away. We've seen often lower seeded teams win the opening game of a seven round series and everybody overreacts and then the tide turns. And that can certainly happen here because Minnesota is still trying to figure out how to be the next level. And I think this Memphis team, we'll see, Akeem. I think that they were not prepared for the moment. 
I think they will be. They won a bunch of games. They're normally outstanding defensively. They weren't in this game. This series is far from over, and you're right. There were some things there as badly as Memphis played in the first quarter where you watch it and you say, series has a long ways to go. Yeah, okay, so send, what are the adjustments then for Memphis in game two? Because, you look, you tip your hat to Minnesota. You blitzed us in game one. What are we doing differently in game two? Hit your open shots. I think they will. I think some of that is nerves, and maybe some of that's a statistical anomaly, and, and that'll revert to the mean. But Memphis has to get back to their own identity. You asked me about the Timberwolves' identity. Memphis's identity is energy. You have to play great defense. Fourth in the NBA in defensive rating. They gave up 109 points per game per game over the course of the season. What they give up, 137 in this game? No disrespect to the Timberwolves and the fact they are the best offense in the NBA since the start of the year. If you're any team that has championship aspirations and you're excellent defensively, you got to play good defense. Memphis did not do that. They did not match the Timberwolves' energy moment for moment. They've got to be better defensively going forward. Yeah, are the Timberwolves going to get theirs? Yes. Can't be 137 points. Can't be 40-plus in a quarter. Yeah, I mean, that's really what Minnesota does, right? They run up and down the floor. I mean, I remember Tim Doyle describing them as a, an AAU team. that They'll just <laughs> score yeah. buckets at will. You take the over when they play their games. Uh, the over hit in this game. Kenny White had the over in this one. It was 236. They scored 247 combined points this game. And, and look, the first quarter... That's really when you won your over bet on that one. In terms of how Minnesota rebounds from this game, right? Because you're on this extremely big high from a win over the Memphis Grizzlies. You took down John ja Morant on their home floor in game one. How do you keep that? How do you sustain that? So if you want to be glasses half full for the Timberwolves, they beat the Clippers to get here, even though Carl Anthony Towns in the play-in game fouls out and they're down, what, seven. So that Minnesota team can tell themselves we're pretty good without Cat. Cat wasn't exactly on fire in that game. He was awful. He was extraordinary in this game. And so you need Carl Anthony Towns. I don't think it's a big ask to be a guy who is a top, let's call it 15 or 20 player in the NBA. That is probably what he is in the regular season. He does that. It's a lot to rely on a young guy. Anthony Edwards can be what he is. Patrick Beverly gives you that defensive energy and effort, and you get some contributors just in the flow of playing in transition and all the gravitational forces that have to go if you've got a cat and an Edwards playing well. Minnesota does what they did in this game, and that can be interesting. I mean, look, if, if Anthony Edwards, though, he's playing the way he he's does, if he's the star, he's a star. In, in this series, Memphis isn't going to win the series if that happens. I think John Moran's like pretty he good, goes, too. He, I think John Moran's pretty good, he, too. He's ex absolutely good. But if, like, if you're getting Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns playing at that same level for five games. I have a lot more confidence in Anthony Edwards at that level in four or five games than I do Carl Anthony Towns, okay. to be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not sold on Cat being consistently excellent, even though I know he's outstanding talent-wise. Okay. All right, time now for your Geico 15-second statement. What do you have for us? It transitions perfectly what you were saying. Here's, uh, here's what we got. Well, here's what's going to happen. I know I got it. Nice job, Minnesota. It's an incredible win. I thought Memphis would come out of the gate a little bit, uh, a little bit lackadaisical. That goes away. Memphis figures it out. They win the next four games. Memphis in five. This is the high water mark of this Minnesota Timberwolves season. And the Memphis we saw in the regular season, they take over starting in game two. There you go. The Memphis Grizzlies will win in five. They're just going to win the next four. It's bold. On to the next round. It's bold, man. I like it. Right. It's, it's bold, Cotton. Way to, way to go. <laughs> Bill Ryder here on CBS Sports HQ. That's the Geico 15 second statement from Bill. All right. So game one goes to Timberwolves 130 117. Game two. On Tuesday, 8.30 Eastern Time. Of course, we'll preview that for you on CBS Sports HQ. Full post game and analysis as uh, the Teen Wolves look to take a 2-0 series lead. Or maybe we'll go even Steven on Tuesday night in Memphis. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.